Do you have all the necessary skills to become a web developer in 2021? Let's find out. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Okay, this is Kyle from the future, and I actually decided to take all of the resources listed in this video and compile them into a 2021 roadmap split between front-end and back-end development. I have over 100 different topics in there, even ones I didn't mention in this video. And on top of that, I included links to videos and resources for each one of those topics, as well as lists of projects ranked from easy, medium, hard for each of the different sections you need to learn. That way you can follow this roadmap completely from beginning to end, and it'll take you where you need to be to be a web developer in 2021. So if you're interested in that, check it out in the description down below. And now back to the actual video. So now with that said, I want to also mention that I'm going to be breaking this video down into about three different sections. The first one will be focused more on front end. The second will be focused more on back end. And the third section is going to be focused on general skills that you need to know no matter what you go into, whether it's front end or back end. So you can kind of jump around to the sections you're most interested in. But to get started with front end, the very first thing that you're going to need to know is HTML. And luckily for you, HTML is fairly basic. There's not much to it and you can learn it in you know about a week at most. You can learn really everything you need to know about HTML in a week. But really the most important things about HTML that you want to learn when you're going through it is you want to learn how forms work in HTML. You want to learn how all the different form tags work, how you can submit those forms, how you can add information into the forms and just everything around forms. You also want to learn about semantic HTML. This is huge for accessibility and also just making your code easier to read. So instead of having thousands of divs, you'll have things like headers, asides, h1, h2, and so on. So it's really important to learn about those. The final thing that I think is important to learn about HTML is something called data attributes. They're really not that useful in just plain HTML, but when you start working with CSS and JavaScript, data attributes are going to become incredibly useful. So learning how to write custom data attributes is going to become useful later on. And speaking of CSS, that is the next thing you need to learn when it comes to front end development. And CSS is one of those things you can again probably learn in about a week to a month, but to master CSS is going to take you years and years of time. There's so much to cover and so much to learn that it's difficult to know where to start. So I recommend when learning CSS, start by learning how specificity works, how you write individual CSS rules, and then also learn how the box model in CSS works. If you understand just that alone, you're going to get really far with CSS. Then once you understand those, I would recommend focusing more on layout. So learn things like positioning, flexbox, grid, even learn how floats work because you may see those every once in a while. Just learning those basic techniques is going to get you very, very far with CSS. Honestly, layout and the first few things that I mentioned are really all you need to know about CSS to build pretty much anything. But if you want to take it even a step further, learning some of the more advanced features such as the calc method, custom properties, pseudo elements, pseudo classes, transitions, animations, and media queries and responsiveness are going to take you to the next level with CSS. Then once you're done learning CSS, or even when you're learning CSS alongside it, you can start learning JavaScript. And JavaScript is where we start to blend between backend and frontend development, because if you want to become a backend developer, if you choose JavaScript as your language that you want to learn, this is going to be a ton of overlap. The features in JavaScript are the same between backend and frontend, and there's only a few differences for frontend specifically. So first I want to talk about just the specific frontend features. And this is going to be things such as how you can query elements in the DOM, how you can manipulate the DOM, how you can traverse the DOM. Understanding those are really important because without that, you have no way to interact with the website through JavaScript. And then once you understand that, I would focus on click event listeners and just events in general in DOM because they're kind of confusing, but understanding how the events work in the DOM is really important. Then you can move on to things like browser storage. This is cookies, local storage, session storage. It's a pretty easy topic to understand. And finally, the fetch function is incredibly important to understand in the front end because it's how you interact with other websites in the front end and is used pretty much everywhere. Now, when it comes to actually learning JavaScript in general, it's pretty difficult because there's a ton to learn about JavaScript. So I want to mention some of the more important things to learn with JavaScript, especially going into 2021. Some things that are really basic are always important. These things are like reference versus value. Understanding that is crucial to understanding JavaScript. Understanding how callbacks work, how promises work, and how async await work are really important because now more than ever, promises and async await are pretty much in every single piece of code you're going to interact with. Also, just understanding ES6 in general, things like classes, arrow functions, destructuring, spread operator, and so on, all of those nice ES6 features are going to be great for understanding because they're everywhere inside of code. 
This includes things like modules, because modules are becoming more and more popular and even supported in more and more browsers. Going back to a few of the more basic features to learn, this would be things like closures. Closures are really difficult in JavaScript to understand when you're first learning, so just trying to make sure you spend the time learning closures is really important. Also understanding scoping and hoisting, those are all kind of related to closures in a certain way. That's also really important to understand. And also understanding recursion, which again is kind of built around that idea of hoisting and scoping and closures. Understanding all of that is really important in making sure you have strong development skills before you start advancing into the more advanced features of JavaScript or even moving on to a front end framework. Lastly, I think it's important to understand how strict equality checks work, as well as how short circuiting works because it's useful all the time, especially in frameworks such as React. And speaking of front end frameworks, that is the next logical step after JavaScript. Now, technically, I still think it's perfectly normal and perfectly okay not to know a front end framework before getting your first job. And I still think there are tons of jobs out there that don't use any front end framework. But as the years go on, and as 2021 progresses into 2022 and 2023, it's going to become more and more important that you understand at least one front end framework. So when it comes to my recommendations, I generally would recommend React as your first front end framework because it is going to be the most popular, it has the most documentation, the most videos, the most courses, and the most jobs available. But if you for some reason try React and you just hate it, you can always use an alternative such as Vue, which is I think probably the second best choice because it's very large, very popular, and has tons of jobs, or you could go the route of Angular. Generally, I don't think Angular is as good of a choice because it's a much larger framework than React or Vue, and it also has less popularity than React or Vue, and just isn't used as much as the other two. So unless you really like it or really want to work for a company that uses Angular, I would recommend going with React or Vue instead. Also, if you want to try something a little bit newer, you could try out Svelte. But Svelte doesn't really have that many jobs going for it right now because it's just not as popular, so it's a little bit of a hit and miss thing. But really, you can't go wrong with any framework. Once you learn a front-end framework, those skills are easily transferable to pretty much any front-end framework. So going from React to Vue, or Vue to Angular, or Angular to React, it's going to be different, but it's going to be similar enough that you're able to make the transition very easily. So if you apply for a React company and all you know is Vue, that's okay because they're going to be able to see that you can go from Vue to React incredibly quickly. Now that pretty much concludes everything you need to know about the front end, so I want to move on to the back end next. And the back end is nice because you get a little bit more freedom in what you want to choose. You can choose pretty much any language that has back end technology. So one that's really popular amongst people that also do front end web development would be JavaScript because you can learn one language and do both back end and front end development. This is why I generally recommend JavaScript as your choice, just because you can then transfer those skills to front end web development, but it's entirely up to you. Other popular choices would be things like Ruby, Go, Rust, Python. Really, you can choose whatever you want, but I would recommend going with one of those choices or JavaScript just because you have that transferability of skills using JavaScript on the front end and the back end. And if you do go with JavaScript, Node.js is going to be what you need to learn. That is what allows JavaScript to run elsewhere besides just on the front end. So learning Node.js is important. And luckily, Node.js is very similar to normal JavaScript. It has all the same functions and methods and everything. It just has a few extra things built into it, such as being able to navigate through the file system that you don't get in the front end because you don't have access to a file system in the front end. So Node.js is really useful for those certain things. Also, while we're speaking of Node.js, it's important to understand what framework you want to use on the back end. While in the front end, I think it's optional whether or not you learn a framework or not, in the back end, it's pretty much crucial that you use some form of web server framework because otherwise you're going to have such a hard time making web servers and it's just going to be a nightmare and pretty much every company uses a framework of some form. And the framework that I generally recommend is going to be Express. It's by far the most popular, very easy to use, there's very few features to it. It's very flexible and it's just the one that most companies are looking for. When it comes to learning Express, the important things to learn are going to be how Express middleware works and also just the general folder structure of how you structure a web server inside of Express is going to be important to understand, just how all those pieces connect together. Also, something that's not directly related to Express is called Socket IO. It allows you to make web socket connections between the front end and the back end. So if you want to do some type of real time interaction, like a messaging app, learning something like Socket IO is really important because web sockets are becoming more and more popular as there's more and more real time interaction between the client and the server. Also, you may be asking, should you learn Dino? Dino is an alternative to Node.js. And I would say right now, don't worry about learning Dino. It's just too new and not very widely used that even if you do learn Dino, it's not really going to help you get a job as much as learning something like Node.js is because Node.js is used everywhere and Dino is just too new to be recommended for most companies. 
Lastly, the final thing you need to learn about Node is common modules. Common modules are very similar to ES6 modules, it's just the system that Node fell into and uses. Currently, they're working on switching over to ES6 modules, and you can use ES6 modules in Node, it's just more common and more practical to use common modules. Hopefully by the end of 2021, as we go into 2022, that'll no longer be something you need to learn, but for now, it is important to understand. Also, it's important to understand just some basic concepts of backend development as a whole. This doesn't matter what language or framework you use, these are important to understand. That is going to be a REST API. Understanding how REST and REST APIs work is crucial since you're most likely going to be building a REST service or a REST API when you work on the backend. Also, if you want, you can learn something called GraphQL. It's an alternative to REST APIs, but it's not nearly as popular or widely used, so it's really up to you which one you want to learn. I would recommend 100% learning REST APIs, and then if you want to, on top of that, add on GraphQL. Lastly, it's important to understand how communication between the server and the client works, because if you don't understand that, it's going to make it very difficult to communicate with the front end through your REST API backend or your server or whatever it is that you're using. When it comes to this server client communication and structure in your server, one of the best techniques used is something called MVC, which stands for Model View Controller. And understanding how that MVC architecture works is again another crucial thing in building out well structured servers and APIs. Last thing that you need to work on when it comes to backend development is going to be databases. And there's two main types of databases you have a NoSQL database and a SQL database. When it comes to which one you want to learn, it's pretty much entirely up to you. Generally, whatever backend language you choose is going to kind of dictate what database you use because some databases are more popular with certain backend languages, while other databases are more popular with other backend languages. I would say learn either MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database, or learn something called Postgres. Postgres is a normal SQL database. Both of them are incredibly popular and widely used, so whichever one you learn, it really doesn't matter. Or you could even learn both because NoSQL and SQL databases are pretty different. So being able to understand both of them will make it really easy for you to determine which one you think would be best for your specific project and for which company you want to work for. Now, the last thing that you may want to understand about databases is something called an ORM. Essentially, this is a way that you can interact with a database through a programming language without actually directly writing SQL queries or database queries. It's just something that you're gonna use with pretty much any database. And also it makes it so the differences between NoSQL and SQL database are a little bit less because the code that you actually write is gonna be very similar between a NoSQL and a SQL database. And that pretty much concludes the differences between backend and front-end development. But what are the topics that you need to know no matter what between both front-end and backend? The first and most obvious one is going to be JSON. I recommend learning JSON pretty early on because JSON is very incorporated inside of JavaScript. JSON literally stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's also super crucial for when building out an API because you're going to be consuming JSON information and returning JSON information with an API, so you need to understand that both for front-end and back-end development. A few other things that are really important to understand are just basic deployment skills. Are you able to deploy your front-end application, your back-end application, and so on? Understanding just basically how to get a website from your computer to the actual World Wide Web is a really important skill to understand. Also, basic security. Understanding what will happen if someone tries to hack my website, what will happen if I don't have these proper security rules in place, can someone do a SQL injection in my database. Understanding just the really basics of security is really important, and it doesn't take much to learn. There's just a few basic things you need to understand, and that'll make your website infinitely more secure. Now, the last super major thing you need to understand is going to be testing. This is unit tests, integration tests, and so on. Just understanding how testing works is going to put you miles ahead of any other developer that's applying for a job, and it'll make your code much better. Now, I kind of want to move on to things that you don't necessarily need to know, but are things that I think are going to grow in popularity significantly during 2021, and in the year's future, maybe things that are going to be required by even junior developers to learn and use inside of a company. The first one is going to be TypeScript. TypeScript is just constantly growing in popularity and becoming easier to use while also becoming more popular in different companies, which means it's something that most likely as the years progress, developers at companies are going to require developers to know as opposed to just preferring that they know it. So TypeScript is definitely something to look out for and learn potentially after learning all these other things. Also, something like Next.js or Nux.js or some other framework built on top of things like React and Vue are another great technology to learn because once you learn React, you can do so much with it, but if you take Next and put it on top of React, you're able to now build out a full stack application with just one single tool. So learning Next.js or Nux.js or another one of those similar type technologies is going to be really important. And a technology like Next.js 
is just constantly growing, especially throughout 2021, is going to become more and more popular and more and more required as time goes on. Lastly, I think it's important to understand what PWAs, which are progressive web apps, and SPAs are, which are single page apps. You don't really necessarily need to know how to build them, but just understanding what they are is important. And also understanding what serverless is, why it can be important, and how you can use it. Again, not something you really need to dive into using or building, but just understand the concept of serverless because it's becoming more and more popular alongside SPAs and PWAs. And with that said, that is everything you need to know to become a web developer in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos linked over here. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.